So we have an article from the Detroit Free Press from September 7th of 2018, which is just about a week before I'm making this video here. Um, the D Detroit Free Press, which is uh, Detroit's main newspaper there, and uh, Detroit being the, uh, at least the American United States uh, automotive center. Um, interesting little article, and it says, uh, it's talking about the, uh, the slip and sales for iconic American cars. And it's going to talk about the Challenger, Charger, Mustang, and Camaro. And it asks if millennials are to blame. I say yes. Let's blame the millennials for everything. No, just kidding. Um, you know, I think with the Camaro, Mustang, Challenger, and Charger, um, if you want to get up into the higher horsepower versions of those cars, you're looking at an awful lot of money just to get in at all, like 40 grand for a new one, um, you know, just to get up into the higher horsepower range on those models. And um, I think for a lot of millennials, that's... You know, they're not in that upper income bracket yet, not upper income bracket, but in that in making those kind of incomes that can justify them spending that kind of money on a car. For a lot of them, not all of them, I'm sure some of you guys out there are millennials that can afford these cars, and that's cool. But for I think for a lot of them, they might like these cars a lot. They might uh, really want one. But uh, the price range is just a little, maybe a little bit out of their reach as of yet. I think if these cars can stick around and keep their sales somewhat reasonable, so a lot of the guys, younger guys now who want one will be able to get one in the future in a, in a pretty short period of time here. Now it says, uh, U.S. auto sales numbers for August appeared to be almost shocking for a couple of iconic cars. The Dodge Challenger, which is down 26% from August 2017, and the Dodge Charger, which is down 45% from August of 17. It asks, uh, could the end really be at hand for the American muscle car and are millennials to blame? I say yes. Let's blame the millennials for everything. There are a couple pictures on this article, and it's people standing around these cars at car shows. And uh, if you look in the people that are standing around and admiring the car, a lot of them look like millennials to me, so I don't think they've lost interest in these cars. Now, the article also talks about uh, that the four cars that we're talking about here, actually compared to other passenger cars, are actually doing okay. Uh, as far as other passenger cars that aren't SUVs or trucks, um, their sales are even worse and really, really bad. So uh, these four cars, the Camaro, Mustang, Challenger, and Charger, are actually doing okay in comparison to those cars. It says that uh, performance cars are going to be affected by the downturn in cars in general, of course, and the shift over to crossovers, which I personally don't understand that, but whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a younger guy with a bunch of kids. Um, my kids are all at least teenagers by now, so... I don't worry too much about the whole how many kids I got to get in the car thing and the crossover thing. I just don't get. They all look exactly the same to me, but uh, that's a whole other subject. But anyway, it says uh, because these cars are such iconic products, they're always going to have some kind of market above and beyond your regular family sedan. So uh, that's the uh, that's that's what this guy Sam Fiorani says. He's the vice president of global vehicle forecasting at Pennsylvania-based Auto Force Cast Solutions. He says, these will be the last cars to go as we shift towards SUVs and trucks. Sedans will go, but these will be the last of a dying breed. The article goes on to say that a one-month snapshot for any given vehicle is not a very complete picture, and it fails to account for a lot of other factors. And uh, you know that those uh, sales drops over this time a year ago doesn't show the entire picture. It says that uh, Fiat Chrysler's Steve Beam, who oversees Dodge and other passenger car brands in North America, he's talking about the Challenger and the Charger, and uh, it goes on down here for him talking about uh, that he's not worried and he's not sitting in his office crying about, hey, I don't have any customers. He's actually pretty happy with the performance that Dodge had in general this calendar year, he says. So uh, that sounds good, at least. He doesn't sound too uh, pessimistic. And then this Beam guy from uh, Chrysler also, he noted the uh, popularity of the recent Roadkill Nights powered by Dodge, which drew 44,000 people to the M1 concourse in uh, Pontiac, Michigan. And that was the weekend prior to the Woodward Dream Cruise. So that drew a lot of people. And, uh, you know, so that's a good sign, too. And a lot of those were millennials. So, And then I agree with this guy, John McElroy. He's the uh, auto industry host of AutoLine. And he said that Fiat Chrysler in particular has employed a brilliant strategy regarding its muscle cars. The Charger was reintroduced in 2006, the Challenger in 2009, but he said that they've added enough spice through the special horsepower offerings and all the other things that they've done with the Hellcat, the Demon, and all the uh, special different versions of the vehicles that uh, they've kept themselves relevant and they're continuing to sell cars. And, uh, you know, kind of what I've always said, they've had a pretty brilliant um, 
strategy with these cars. They haven't changed them a whole lot, but they've uh, they've kept them in the news. They kept them exciting, and they kept them in the forefront of people's minds when they think of these kind of cars, even though they haven't really come out with an all new car in a while. And the same guy also talks about how any car, after it's been out for a while, the sales drop off year after year until they come out with a new version of it, and that's just this is pretty normal, and, and not something that's uh, unusual in any way. They need to uh, need to get a new car out in the next few years because they can't just keep doing this forever. But that it's normal, and they are doing a good job of uh, keeping it, uh, like I said, keeping it interesting. So even without the new model. Also goes on to say that General Motors no longer releases monthly sales numbers, but they said the Camaro was down more than 30% through June. Um, it said Mustang had a good August, up 35% compared to the prior year, so Mustang's doing pretty well. Anyway, it just goes on basically to say, you know, they don't think anybody's in trouble, they don't think any of these cars are necessarily going away, but, uh, you know, just uh, there's just some issues and it's not a big deal. These cars are going to, like they said, these will be the last cars to go away because they have, kind of fill a special niche there. And uh, even though the headline was kind of uh, one of those headlines that kind of makes you go, whoa, what, are they getting rid of these cars or is, it this, is this really happening? Kind of like it did in the early 70s when muscle cars died because of several factors, including gasoline and uh, insurance rates and the uh, energy crisis and all the other things going on back then. But uh, yeah, you know, they've got to put a headline up there for you to read. So then you read the actual article and it's not nearly as uh, negative and bad as it really looked. But uh, that's cool. Interesting article. Give it, give it a look, guys. Detroit Free Press. You can go online look at it. It's from about a week ago. So guys, just thought I would share that Detroit Free Press article with you. Uh, go check it out for yourself if you want in a little bit more detail. I just kind of touched on some of the main points. So anyway, check that out if you feel like it. Um, tomorrow will be the one year anniversary that we got our car, or that we took delivery of the car we ordered, the uh, 2018 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. I will be making that one month uh, anniversary review and uh, let you know what I think of the car so far, which I'm sure you can pretty much imagine what I'm going to say, but that's okay. And we'll show some of the old video from when we picked it up and we will uh, talk about the uh, year that we had and um, all that good stuff. So guys, I hope you'll be back with me tomorrow to watch that video. I'm very excited to do it. I'm very excited to show it to you guys. So Thanks a lot, guys. This is Joey66. I'm going to get out of here and start thinking about that video I'm going to make tomorrow. But hang in there for a few more minutes and watch some more stuff. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. And it says Mustang had, let's see, didn't, uh, let's see, Mustang have a, uh, <laughs> it also goes on to say that General Motors, um, <clears throat>